Scorpio, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you, no particular subjects we're gonna do. We're gonna take an issue, something we know, something we don't know, recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there'll be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your eighth house, this could be for you. You know the drill, guys. Thank you for all your support. However it comes, it's very much appreciated. It allows me to continue doing this. Cross watchers, you're more than welcome. Message may well be for you. All the information is in the description box. Just hit the more button below. Okay, Scorpio, quite a uh, big energy for you guys. Um, today in, in the UK, um, a lot of places it was yesterday, is the full moon in uh, Scorpio. Um, so it's all happening in your first house. Technically, yes, but because it was such an early degree, you uh, a lot of you got Scorpio risings in particular, the energy will have actually taken place in your 12th house. So um, I just want to point out that type of energy, if your um, dreams will be intense as it is, maybe sleep disruptions, um, but if you generally do feel like um, exhausted or run down or, you know, feeling like, you're very, very tired. Do make sure you're taking time out to rest, self-care, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, Believe me, coming from experience, when you ignore the universe in the 12th house, you, you pay for it in the first. Uh, so just do make sure that you're, um, you know, if, if you're supposed to rest, the universe will make you rest at some point. So just be mindful of how you feel. Um, other than that, let's dive in. Let's do uh, two more. Scott. Here we go. What is happening with you guys? We have the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is a beautiful balance. It's Venus in Aries. It's the Emperor meets the Empress. It's also celebrations as well. Um, so you could be, it could be a wedding. It could be a, an engagement of some kind. It could be taking someone to the next level. It could also be focused on the fourth house of home, possibly. Let's see. What do we know? What don't we know? Ooh. Recent past. Advice. Okay. And potential outcome. Interesting. Okay. How weird. Yeah, Seven of Swords. Right. Um, this is going to sound really, really strange, but there's something that... Because it's, it's like an amazing spread until we get to the end, but it, it's good when I ex I'll explain it. So... Seven of Swords uh, is obviously, you know, it's that kind of not very pleasant, it's um, uh, deceit, it's, um, yeah, not fantastic. Uh, with the uh, Queen of Cups in this deck, it looks like she's handing out Humble Pie. Um, Four of Cups, Knight of Pentacles, King of Cups, Two of Pentacles, the Hierophant, Two of Swords, the Ten of Wands, Four of Swords and the Devil with the tower all right i was going to be looking for the tower in a second anyway uh with the six of pentacles this is interesting so especially with the hierophant next to what was the hierophant next to two of swords and the two of pentacles two of pentacles being the wheel of fortune meets the devil so and the six of pentacles being the moon in taurus right tower and the devil it's kind of like the three of pentacles mars and capricorn and um, friends of fate the norms um weavers of, uh, of of the past, present and future. This is gonna sound really strange because I'm, I'm not a gamer myself or anything like that, but I'm kind of hearing the NPCs, the non-player characters in your life, they're gonna start getting removed. Um, it's like anything that is deceitful in terms of that seventh house energy, because your Taurus energy, uh, for Scorpio is your opposite sign. So you being first house, opposite sign is the seventh, which is partnerships, creativity, uh, partnerships, one-on-ones, um, uh, very all seventh house stuff. 
the interesting energy for um, um, I was wondering what that noise was. The interesting energy for Taurus at the moment, and, it's, and I, I did I, I slightly anticipate that this would be spoken about in this reading, because um, uh, the fixed signs have those, you know, connections. Um, you guys, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius. Sedna, the um, the legend of of, of the you know uh, complete betrayal by the by the father of cutting her hands off when she's trying to climb into a boat, uh, feeling of betrayal in all aspects of life, um, has been in Taurus as a point since the sixties, and it leaves in like two days. So if it's in Taurus's first house, uh, that means that energy of betrayal has always been in the since the 60s in your seventh house of relationships which means you've drawn in those type of energies or you've had to deal with those type of energies throughout your life depending on how old you are but all your life for, for uh, quite a considerable amount of you and it's like when that moves into gemini it leaves your seventh house so it's like an end of a betrayal in terms of relationships or partnerships or contracts um and it just feels like the universe is, is is taking away that energy. It's like the NPCs, those 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 people that are just no longer on your vibrational path, those non-player characters as the gaming aspect. And again, like I say, I don't game. Um, we're going back many years before I, the last time I was uh, into that. So we've got the Four of Wands. What we're aware of is the Nine of Pentacles. It's Venus in Virgo. It's the Empress dressed as the, um, the Hermit. With the... What we're not aware of is the Ace of Pentacles. And it's like... There's, it's like a missing piece. You're taking it to the, the next level. Um, recent past is the Six of Swords. Now, the Six of Swords is um, is Mercury in Aquarius, so the Magician meets the Star card. We add together the Nine and the, and the uh, Ace equals the Ten is the Magician in the uh, in Virgo, uh, Mercury in Virgo, so the Magician meets um, the Hermit. It's like whatever is blocking your life at the moment, whatever disappointments are in your life is getting removed. Three different cards of the lovers in this deck. This is the one that I've labelled myself as something in the way. It doesn't have to be um, uh, about a relationship. But these, for me, for me this, this character in the middle is, is representative of Sedna, the betrayed. You know, whatever is betrayed in terms of seven house aspects. Your outcome is the Five of Cups. Now, Five of Cups is normally a disappointing uh, energy, but it's actually Mars in Scorpio. So it's like the tower hits death. And I kind of feel like this is whatever is stopping you from becoming death, as in your, your sign, as in stepping into your power. There's going to be like an electric bolt with the uh, thunderbolt energy of, of the tower to remove anything that is energetically stuck on you that's stuck that's caused these energies in your relationships <sighs> i took a lot to get out didn't it um okay so i'm gonna look for the death card now we've already seen the tower and i also want to see where the ten of pentacles is but it's like you know the empress and the emperor in the four of wands is supposed to be together again this doesn't have to be a relationship it's like whatever's blocking you from whatever's meant for you. And this is kind of getting energized here to remove whatever it is. And like I say, it's, it's those energies that are no longer vibrational matches that will just start falling away. Friendships, work colleagues, partnerships that are no longer vibrational matches, they'll just start drifting and drifting and drifting. Okay. Ten of Pentacles is with the Chariot and the Ace of Cups. Look at that. Uh, there could be pregnancies for some with the Chariot and the Ace of Cups. Doesn't have to be, um, you know, added to the uh, to the um, you know the family type of thing. Um, but whatever it is, whatever that ten, ten of Cups represents, whatever this removal of the energy that has been plaguing your seventh house for all these years um when that removes it's like a fast forward to abundance and love 
Death is wedged between the world and the ace of wands. Whatever it is, is freeing you some something amazing. It's going to give you a lease of life. It's going to give you um, uh, passion, creativity. It feels fantastic. I just want to see where the Ten of Swords is as well, because the Ten of Swords is actually the um, in a different deck is is representation of uh, Sedna. Ten of Swords is with the Page of Pentacles and the Emperor. This is kind of whatever's blocking, you know, whatever's been like a page rather than an emperor is getting removed. It's like, this is amazing. Nine of Cups straight afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's which is Jupiter in, in, um, um, in Pisces. So the Wheel of Fortune meets the Hangman. I always kind of see it as delayed blessings. You've got like a clean slate in your seventh house of relationships. And, and again, relationships don't have to be um, romantic. But either way, it's like... Um, oh, dropped a card. It's obviously going to be significant, so let me see where it is. The Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands is Mercury in Sagittarius, so that magician brings in temperance rather than the devil. <laughs> um, yeah, whatever this is, it's like um, energies are getting removed to align you to Emperor and Empress. You know, this is celebrations, joy, um, the, the, the correct alignment to match your vibrational frequency i like it interesting in your extended let's um what we're gonna we're gonna we'll, we'll look at what then comes in if that makes sense the we'll mirror this reading the recent past will be what's getting removed but the rest of it is going to be focused on what it's actually allowing to come into your life um interesting okay guys let me know if, if uh, this resonates and um, join me if you can in the extended venus in aries venus in scorpio not scorpio oh you could have venus in scorpio venus in virgo mercury in uh, aquarius we have gemini we have mars in scorpio moon in aquarius moon in cancer jupiter in capricorn taurus moon in libra Saturn in Sagittarius, Jupiter in Libra, Capricorn, Aries in Scorpio, Moon in Taurus, Gemini, Aquarius, Mercury in Cancer, Wands, Swords, Pentacles, Cups, everyone's here, those of you standouts, take care, see you soon, bye.